What's going on ladies and gentlemen, Travis from americantrucks.com. Today I'm going to show you how to squeeze the most horsepower and torque on your 2015 or 2016 EcoBoost powered F-150 by pressing a couple of buttons on a tuner like this one. In fact, this is the SCT uh, Livewire TS Plus tuner and this is going to be the most expensive option. Let's just go ahead and address that elephant in the room. Comes in at around the $600 price point, but guys, this is going to be the most all-inclusive tuner. In my humble opinion, this is also one of the most well-designed and this is also one of the only tuners that you can buy that's currently set up like a proper smart device. It has a complete 4-inch HD color touchscreen display, no actual uh, buttons to press, you're only using the touch display. It's got all kinds of cool preloaded tune options on here. You can also store up to 10 custom tunes in here, so you can pretty much tune your truck for any application. There's a ton of other features on here that I'm going to show you in a little bit, but the basic gist of it is you can read and clear diagnostic trouble codes, saves you a little bit of cash as opposed to having to go to the dealer. You can also monitor a ton of gauges in real time, again, all in HD. You can completely customize the layout and the gauges themselves. You can pretty much pull all the information out of the PCM. So you have a full diagnostic profile of your truck while you're driving around. You can also install your tunes wirelessly. This is completely Wi-Fi enabled. So the same thing applies if you ever need to update the software or the preloaded tune uh, firmware on the device as well. You don't have to plug this thing into a computer. You don't have to sit outside in the driveway for an hour either with this thing hooked up to a laptop or anything like that. Works just like any iOS or Android device. So it's one of the modern tuners in my humble opinion. Now, obviously performance matters most, right? So what kind of performance can you squeeze out of your truck just by pressing a couple of buttons on here? Well, we went ahead and we actually ran our truck on the dyno uh, with the current wheels and tires that you see in the background there. So our stock numbers, we ended up making 299 horsepower and 332 pound-feet of torque. We then installed the preloaded tune available on the Livewire TS Plus. The only option that we selected was 93 octane in order to advance our timing as well as get better air and fuel and we ended up running it on the dyno again everything else on the truck was left the same so our after numbers look pretty good guys we ended up making 311 horsepower and 365 pound feet of torque which makes for pretty respectable peak gains of 12 horsepower and 33 pound feet of torque but what's really impressive are the curve gains pretty much from idle up to around 4,000 rpm we see very consistent curve gains over our factory run and our curve gains actually top out at 31 horsepower and 41 pound feet of torque those are pretty impressive numbers that's what you're actually going to feel when you're driving around when you're punching the pedal on rolling starts or at that stoplight. So for a couple of button presses, again, you do get a ton more horsepower and torque with this device. So besides the available tunes, there's also a ton of other features on here. This thing actually supports a rear view camera if your truck does not come equipped with it. And the preloaded tune file in here also allows for a ton of customizing and adjusting. You can actually adjust timing on your own if you're familiar with how to do so. You can make changes to things like the rev limiter, your shift points. You can calibrate for things like new gears in the rear axle. Uh, you can also calibrate for things like new tires and wheels so you can make sure your speedometer is working correctly. And again, you have that data log option there for custom tuning and advanced troubleshooting. So again, one of the most all-inclusive tuners. Um, go ahead and check it out more on the site. And if you decide to stick with the Livewire TS Plus, you can actually come back in a little bit. I'm gonna show you guys how to get this thing hooked up to your truck, how to get it updated. And I'm also gonna teach you how to tune your truck. And then I'll walk you through all the other features and functions step-by-step. Step. Shouldn't take us more than 15 minutes. Gets a very soft one out of three wrenches on the old difficulty meter. So check back in just a little bit and we'll get started. Okay, so once you have your tuner, go ahead and pull it out of the box. You want to grab the data cable, the OBD2 cable, and plug the HDMI end into the back of the tuner. Then you want to plug the other end of the cable into the OBD2 port located underneath the steering column. Now, if this is the first time using the tuner, we're going to want to make sure that it's up to date. So before we actually tune our truck or do anything else, we're actually going to pan over using these little navigation arrows on the left and right side of the screen, and we want to select Update. Now once you select update, you're going to have to first configure your Wi-Fi connection. It's pretty much like any smartphone. Simply select configure Wi-Fi and it's going to scan for the available local Wi-Fi networks. Now you can see here we have all of our available Wi-Fi connections. I can't show you guys how to actually connect because our network is already connected and ours works a little differently than normal. But you would select the appropriate connection and if it has a uh, key or a passcode that you need to enter, it will prompt you to do so. Then it will connect automatically, again, pretty much like any Android or iOS device. So once you're connected to Wi-Fi, you can exit out of the configuration. 
Okay, so once you have your Wi-Fi configured, you would then select check for updates. Now again, ours is already connected, we've already done so, so we don't need to do that. But basically, you'd follow the prompts under check for updates. The device will automatically scan for available updates from the cloud server, and it will download all the necessary files and install them on the device. Once your device is up to date, you can exit out of here, and we're actually gonna go back to our home screen here. We're gonna select program vehicle. This is where we're actually going to tune our truck. Now when you go to program your vehicle, there's gonna be this quick little disclaimer notice. Go ahead and click continue on that. And it's gonna prompt you to make sure your key is in the ignition and in the on position, if not already. This is your first time using the device. It's also gonna give you this little pop-up at some point here. This is just letting you know how to navigate the uh, user interface by using the touch screen. You can exit out of this little dialog box by hitting the X there in the top right corner. And then it's gonna bring us to the home screen with our available preloaded tunes and any custom tunes that you may have purchased or installed. Matt, we're only interested in what the preloaded tune can do for us today, so we're gonna select that for our vehicle. And at this point, the device will begin uh, communicating with the PCM and it's gonna begin building that tune file. Now, once you come into the preloaded tune, you're gonna have to make some changes to some of the uh, different uh, options in here. Um, the only one that you actually have to make a change to is fuel octane. You wanna select 91 or 93 octane. By default, it's gonna be listed at 87 octane. 93 octane is going to provide the most advancement in timing, and it's gonna provide the best air and fuel mixture, so that's gonna provide us with the most performance. There are also some other options that you can make changes to in here. Uh, we have our speed limit and uh, we have our rev limiter. Looks like there's some other things we can change in here, including idle speed, and you can uh, continue going down the list if you have other options available to you. But again, we're only interested in seeing what kind of performance we can get here. So go ahead and update your fuel octane to the appropriate level and select approve. Now it goes without saying, before we actually install our tune, you wanna make sure you have the appropriate octane fuel in the tank. And before we click continue, we're gonna verify any of the changes that we've selected for our preloaded tune file to make sure that they're applied once we hit continue. Now it may ask you to cycle the key off and on during this process as well. This is the only time that you should be uh, doing so. Okay, now at this point, the uh, Livewire is actually saving a uh, kind of a screenshot, if you will, of the factory uh, tune or the factory file on the PCM. That way, if you ever want to untune your truck or go back to stock, you can do so. Okay, now at this point, the Livewire has prepared our tune file with the changes and selections that we've opted for. It has built the file and it's now installing it on the PCM. Now, it is transmitting data to the vehicle, so at this point, it's very important that you don't interrupt this process. Doing so, you could actually uh, brick your truck, if you will, in which case you won't actually be able to turn the motor over, in which case you have to get it flashed uh, by the dealer with a recovery file. So again, very important, don't unplug the device uh, from the uh, OBD2 port. Also make sure your battery voltage is good before you uh, begin the tuning process. And again, only operate the key in the ignition if the live wire prompts you to do so. Okay, now once the tune file is finished installing, the live wire is gonna clear out any false diagnostic trouble codes that may have been triggered during the installation process. And then if everything goes well, which it should, you should get this little uh, um, confirmation page here letting you know that our tune has been programmed successfully to the vehicle. And that tells you have to turn the key off. You don't have to, you can just click done if you want to continue using the device. Uh, but that's pretty much all you need to do to program your vehicle. Uh, once you have the tune installed, if you ever need to return it back to stock for any reason, all you need to do is select program vehicle again. And you can see we have our return to stock option right here. It's the same exact process as a tune install, except we're uninstalling the tune. Now, if you guys want to stick around, I'm going to show you all the other features here available with the TS Plus. Okay, so next up on our list are the performance tests. Performance tests are pretty cool because they allow you to kind of benchmark your truck's performance in real time when you're actually driving around. Um, so you want to select the performance test button and it'll bring you to the home page for the available tests 
uh, that you want to perform. So uh, each test has a little checkbox to it. You can actually perform um, all three tests at once if you want to, or you can just select one of the three or two of the three, whatever. Um, we'll just select zero to 60 miles per hour as an example. Um, if this is the first time doing the performance test, by the way, you'll uh, get a pop-up box that's going to ask for you to input your gross vehicle weight. That's to make sure that the test is calibrated and displaying the uh, information correctly when you perform it. Once you have that done, you can click continue after you've selected the test you want to perform, and it'll give you this little pop-up here letting you know what each test is and what you have to do to complete the test. Once you've understood all of those instructions, you can close out this little box here. And it's actually gonna open up a home screen here. Um, and this is the actual test interface. So all you need to do is make sure your truck is running and you'll see you have three tests here. Uh, they're kind of hard to see because they're not highlighted yet. But once you complete each of the tests, they'll actually highlight there. So once you're ready to start rolling, all you need to do is hit start and you can begin performing the test. So for our zero to 60 test, you would accelerate from zero to 60 miles per hour. If you have the braking test as well, uh, checked and then you would then uh, brake as quickly as you could from 60 miles per hour and it will record that test and the same thing applies for the quarter mile test. Um, once you're done performing the test you can select stop and it will save that information as a data log file on the device. Um, if you need to exit the screen simply uh, do a little hand gesture there to pull down and you can actually change your vehicle weight there and you can select exit to exit the testing screen and it will then terminate the test information and save it on the device. Uh, you can also use uh, real-time gauges while you're driving around. Uh, that's useful for monitoring uh, vehicle performance. You can also data log, in which case the live wire will save all the information that the PCM is monitoring and it will actually export that into a file that you can then view later. That's very useful for custom tuning and troubleshooting. Um, but before we actually use our gauges and data logging, we have to select the appropriate vehicle category, um, which obviously we're using our EcoBoost truck, so we want to select Ford 08 gas uh, newer and then click continue. Okay, now it is also gonna provide some uh, instructions on how to actually use the uh, gauge screen and data log here. A single tap on the screen will allow you to do the drop down menu to make any changes, and you can double tap on individual gauges to edit them. So go ahead and close out that dialog box here. And uh, now we actually have our uh, gauge screen here. It looks very similar to our benchmark um, slash performance screen here. But we have a couple of default gauges being displayed. We have our current battery voltage. Um, ours is reading a little bit high here because ours is actually hooked up to a tender currently. Uh, but we also have our coolant temp and then we also have a boost gauge here. Um, so again, if you want to make changes to this, uh, you can reset the minimum and maximum values that were last recorded uh, by pressing that as well. If you want to begin data logging, real simple, all you need to do is select record. You'll have this little record indicator here. That's uh, going to indicate that the device is now saving all the information that it's reading from the PCM. And if you want to stop data logging, go ahead and hit record again. It'll automatically save that file. And then we have a couple other options on here, including the layout and the configuration for this screen. Um, but before we get into that, let's look at individual gauges. Uh, let's say we want to change our uh, coolant temperature. So we're going to double tap that. And that's going to bring up the home screen for the individual gauge. So you can see here we have the unit currently being measured and we have the units that it's being measured in. And we also have our minimum and maximum ranges. Uh, that's how we actually kind of build the gauge, if you will. You can actually change these values uh, to whatever you would like. But if we want to actually change what we're looking at here, you can actually select item. And that's going to pull up all the different available gauges that you can change to. There are a ton of different options on here. This is all the information that your PCM is monitoring uh, in real time. We have all kinds of air and fuel and timing and all that good stuff in here. Let's just select a new one uh, just for the sake of exampling this here. Uh, so let's just go ahead and select our intake air temperature. And again, we have our units in Fahrenheit. We'll simply can change that if you want to. Unfortunately, Celsius is not available. Um, but again, make any changes you want for how you want the gauge to display. Once you're happy with your settings, click Approve. And you can see here we now have our intake air temperature. Even though our truck is off, it is providing us with a value or a readout, if you will. Now let's take a look at how to change the layout and configuration here. So we have our different gauge screen layouts, if you will. And this is our default gauge screen up here with one tax style gauge, two digital gauges. You can select different options and I believe you can select up to uh, nine different gauges to view. They have digital, they have graphs, they have all different combinations. Let's go ahead and select a digital gauge just as an example. 
You can see here it opens up our available gauges that we can monitor. And again, it's the same process regardless of the layout. If you want to make changes to an individual one, simply double tap it and it'll pull up that individual gauge screen. Now the last option on here, it's not something that you'll probably use, but since we did see it earlier, we might as well explain it here. We have configuration. Um, this is basically only going to be necessary if you uh, accidentally selected the uh, incorrect vehicle category. So if you find your uh, gauges are not displaying correctly or you're missing information that you should be available to view, then you want to double check you have the correct vehicle category selected under configuration. And then again, if you want to exit this screen simple, single tap and click exit to go back to the home page. Now next up we have our vehicle functions. There are some other useful things we can do in here. This is one of my personal favorites. Uh, this is very useful for diagnosing uh, any issues you may have with your vehicle. Um, so if you ever have a check engine light or any lights pop up on your dash, that's going to indicate you have a DTC or a diagnostic trouble code. So if you do have one of those lights pop up, all you need to do is come under vehicle functions and select read DTC codes. Want to make sure key's in the on position, then the live wire will automatically scan the PCM and it will spit out an alphanumeric code on this screen indicating what the underlying issue is. All you need to do is do a little bit of research to find what the problem is. Nice little way to chase some uh, issues without having to go to the dealership and spend a little bit of cash just to have them scan it for you. Um, once you've figured out what the issue is, you can actually clear that code off your dash. Again, very straightforward. Just select clear DTCs, make sure the key's in the on position, and the device will automatically clear those codes. Now we also have special functions here. This is not something you'll be using often, um, but I'll show you guys what's in here just so you can see. Uh, we have a cam reset and we have a crank relearn. Cam reset is gonna basically provide the same effect as if you were pulling the terminal off of your batteries. Um, so basically, if you need to do a hard reset on your truck for some reason, you can actually do it through here digitally by selecting cam reset. That'll clear out the cache in the PCM It'll default everything on the dash and all that good stuff. Uh, crank relearn, guys, that's not something you ever want to touch. Um, this is really only something that uh, a trained technician is going to do, and that's usually if you're getting some advanced engine work done. If you know what a crank relearn is, I don't really need to explain it to you. And if you don't know what it is, well, safe to say, do not press that. Um, there's really no benefit to doing so. Now we're going to pan over to the next uh, window here. And uh, this is more settings and information here. We have some basic vehicle info that you can pull up here. Uh, again, this is convenient for custom tuning as well as troubleshooting things you have your VIN. You also have your ECU strategy. You're gonna need that for uh, custom tuning. You have some basic vehicle information on here as well. Uh, you can also input the vehicle weight from this screen if you need to calibrate something uh, at any time. And we have our device information here as well. The device info is useful because it provides your current firmware version. Also has a tuning status here. You can see we have our preloaded and custom tuning supported. We also have our current tune revisions. And we also have the amount of unlocks and our married status. Married status indicates that the tune or that the tuner itself rather is locked to a vehicle. So once you throw a tune on the truck, this device will now be married to that truck. You can't use the device to tune another vehicle unless you convert the existing vehicle back to stock. And a convenient way to check that, again, is with the married status on here. And we also have our device settings. Uh, device settings is useful. Um, that's going to let you make changes to things like sound and display. You can set things up like the screen brightness for day and night. You can also change the theme on the device. They have a red and a dark theme there, so you can change the color scheme if you want to. And uh, you can also turn on an ambient light sensor. Um, that's going to uh, allow the screen to automatically brighten and dim based on ambient light outside. If you want to keep it at a fixed setting, just go ahead and turn that off. You can also turn the uh, little beeps on and off if you'd like to. And you can also uh, enable and disable some of the power options on the device itself. You can also um, disable that uh, key check if you're tired of the device asking you to confirm that the key's in the ignition because you have it in there already, you can uh, disable that as well. But the most important option on here is gonna be factory reset. Factory reset is gonna completely flush all the information in the device. It's gonna get rid of anything you may have built or created in here. It'll delete all of your data log files, etc. The only thing that factory reset won't do is untune your vehicle. If you ever wanna go back to stock, you do have to go back to program vehicle in order to remove the tune itself. But besides that, if you want to clear everything out of the TS Plus, maybe you want to give it to a buddy or use it on a different vehicle, make sure you do a factory reset um, through the device settings. 
and that's going to cover all of the features and functions of the TS Plus. All right, so as you saw, tuning the truck only took a couple minutes, and it's incredibly easy setting up everything else, like those gauges and data logging, all that good stuff. Um, so I hope I helped you out a little bit, showed you how easy this thing is. That'll wrap up my review and install of the SCT Livewire TS Plus your 2015 and 2016 3.5 liter EcoBoost powered F-150. Be sure to check this thing out more on the site and for all things F-150, keep it right here at americantrucks.com.